Hi, I'm David. And I'm Rachel. Welcome to Leisure Bit. And today we're coming to you from Keswick in the Lake District. Let's go and take a look around. Leisure Bit is the way to go with David, Rachel and Roxy. Let's hit the road and explore. We're back in Keswick again, but this time staying at the Keswick Camping and Caravanning Club site just down by the lake. Last time we stayed at Castle Rig Farm back in September. Like most of the club sites, you can arrive from 1pm. If you turn up earlier, you may get turned away. On arrival, they check which pitch you've been allocated to or which pitch type and then help you choose a suitable pitch. And you're normally escorted to your pitch as we can see the lovely chap here taking us round. We were on a hard standing pitch and that included an electrical hookup. We asked for a pitch with a view of the lake. This is the one uh, we thought was most suitable just round here. Whilst it's not round the lake side as those are premium pitches and service pitches and you can see down the lake. So here we are, a Keswick camping and caravanning club site. You can see across to the lake from here. There's the van. When you come into the site, you definitely can't arrive before one o'clock. There's one way system in place and it does get very congested. Behind me here, the bin compound, which is just near reception. At the facilities block, there's a pot wash area that's undercover. There's accessible facilities. There's an information room, a laundry, which has washers and dryers in it. There's a backpacker's room, which has a fridge, a microwave and a sink in it. Then there's the ladies and gents toilet and shower facilities. Right in front of the barriers, you'll see there's the reception area. When the main toilets are being cleaned, you can actually come up to a different area. We'll just go and have a look there now. With the pot wash area. Another chemical disposal point and another ladies. From the other facilities block you can follow a path straight down to the lake. The lake is very very accessible from the pitches especially the super service pitches and you come down here a couple of minute walk depending on where you are on the site to the actual lake itself where you can access the dog walk. Have a look at this view. Quite often you get aeroplanes going over the, the top in the Lake District. I'm not sure Roxy's too keen. There are actually a couple of pods now on site that there never used to be, which are just near the second uh, facility block there. There is a launch facility from the site. So you've got boats, paddle boards, kayak, canoes, and you get a permit. Paddleboard, kayak, and canoe is £2.65 a day or £12 for the week. A boat is £5.30 for the day or £24 for the week. Just past the launch, there is the dog walk, which is through here. As you can see, the dog walk's quite muddy in places. So you've just got to be a bit careful because it's very slippy. So I've literally just recorded to say that it's quite muddy and slippy on the dog walk and guess what happened folks? I slipped. Oh me oh my. Feels rather <laughs> sticky. Roxy doesn't care though, she's still enjoying herself. And Roxy didn't come to see me either to see how I was. <laughs> Trousers are clinging to me. As you can see, I slid down that bank. <laughs> Never mind. The scenery here is just spectacular. This is just from the campsite. You don't have to walk anywhere. Just look at this. Absolutely beautiful. Down here, when you've come through the outer circle, there is a lane which leads you to the grass-only pitches. I don't think they're used in the winter because obviously the land here gets very, very wet. But it's a nice big site and they've got their own bins and recycling facilities. 
The site itself is um, configured into outer circles which then spiral with different rows in circles so everybody um, goes on a, on a different loop. All of the pitches on the main site are hard standing. It's quarter to two, still plenty of people arriving. So you walk down this lane into Keswick and uh, it takes about five 10 minutes walk depending on how fast you uh, walk to get into the centre of town and here's the way out of the campsite this brings you back down the road here that we came in on you probably notice on the site that there was flood alert statuses that's because the site has a tendency to flood in torrential rain Keswick site so we've got the bus station just behind us there or the terminus where you can catch a bus and as well as the bus station, we've got booths. So here we are in the centre of Keswick. Is there his Moose Hall. Hello, Rox. <laughs> we popped into the King's Arms for a drink with Roxy. So today, I'm off on a trip for my birthday that Rachel's trekked me to which is a bus tour with Mountain Goat around the Lake District, Ten Lakes. Happy 50th birthday, David. Yeah. And thank you to Steve and Suze from the Meandering Manx for giving us this idea. David was inspired to do it, so it's going to be great. Yeah, and you're going to look after Roxy, aren't you? I am indeed. Yeah. Anyway, the bus will be here shortly, so let's get cracking. There's David about to get on the bus, ready for his trip. That's a birthday boy gone off for his bus trip, he's going to see Ten Lakes with a tour called the Mountain Goats. Let's hope he has a good day. We're on the bus, just leaving Keswick and heading to Appleside where we're going to pick up the Mountain Goat. The bus fare was £2 uh, with the government incentive that's on at the moment, which is brilliant. And it's about a 45 minute journey. So pick you up and we get to Appleside. I'm just going to check out where to pick up the mountain goat bus and then have a quick look around before that arrives. Looks like it's just across the road, which is handy. Before heading on the trip, I thought I'd grab myself a coffee in Ambleside while I wait for the bus. Got the mini golf behind us there and the church. And then round this way, we've got up towards the town. Here comes the Mountain Goat. This is our tour bus for the day. The youngest, it's not very old. The bus collected me here and it'll drop me back later. The driver gives a guided tour and lots of useful facts and information about the areas that we're going to be visiting today. It's only 10 feet or 3 metres square and it's built on a bridge over a stream. It is called Bridge House. So here we are in Grasmere, famous for William Wordsworth. We've taken a 20 minute stop here, just going to have a little bit of a wander around. 60 pence in Grasmere to spend a penny. So this garden began in 1998 where the rector proposed setting up a fund to help with the ongoing church maintenance. 
Isn't it lovely? It's called the Daffodil Garden. You can see on each of the stones, it's got people's names. And that's helped fund things. Isn't that a good idea? I imagine this looks absolutely amazing when the daffodils are out. Behind me here is William Wordsworth's grave. Like I say, bricks and bricks. Now, in its day, that would have been extremely expensive to build. It doesn't matter which side of the bush you're on, by the way, we're coming back over this bridge. Behind us is Ashness Bridge, and it's an old pack horse bridge. It's very narrow, with not very much side on it, uh, as per the design of the day. It's just wide enough for two horses to pass. The road up to Surprise Views closed and it's pedestrian only access. And here's the car park at Ashness Bridge. This uh, was rescued by a gentleman called Mark Weir. So here we are at oh, Honest Slate Mine. What a lovely view down the valley there. It's a model of the bridge house that we saw earlier in Ambleside at the slate mine here. You can actually buy slate there. 20 pound a meter square for the thin, 25 for the thick, and 250 pound a ton for the thick. Take a little walk along now, just to admire the view from the other side. See the stream coming down the mountain. What an absolutely cracking view from here, down right down the valley there. See the bus heading up. I think those people will be going on the zip wire. Not for me today. So you can take a mine tour from here. Um, it's worth uh, booking it. There's also a shop and a cafe. Stop for a little refreshment break at the uh, slate mine here. A nice bit of cake. Can you guess which one I have? So part way up the Newlands Valley, you'll find the highest and the tallest waterfall. We've stopped in Keswick for lunch. So here's Rachel. Happy birthday. <laughs> We had a look round for somewhere to get some lunch and we stopped at the Lake Road Inn. Thought we'd have a couple of beers. I had the Cumberland sausage and Rachel had the scampi. Lovely lunch there at the Lake Road Inn. It was beautiful. Yeah, it was well, really nice. Well worth stopping. Got the Wainwright pub behind us there. And just over the road we've got... George Fisher. So if you want to head down to the lake, you need to go that way and head back up into the town, up this way.
surprised how many places they get themselves set up for Christmas. We're only in November. The dog and gun. Oh, the irony. We've got the King's Arms behind us there. Roxy's favourite pub. Here we are at the Castlerigg Stone Circle, which predates Stonehenge. This is the second visit to Castlerigg Stone Circle as Roxy and I walked here when we stayed at Castlerigg Farm in September. What was really interesting this time, the guide told us a lot about the stones and the placing of them and how they align up with the different mountains and things. And it was quite fascinating. Castlerigg Stone Circle and its mysteries. Amazing, isn't it? So here we are at our final stop of the day, which is at Glen Ridding Steamer uh, behind us, which you can take down to the other end, which is at Pawley Bridge and all the other stops along the way. It's just starting to get a little bit darker, but an absolutely fantastic view down the lake there. It's been an absolutely fantastic trip. It cost around £50. Do check the website uh, for more information, but absolutely well worth it. And a massive thank you to Rachel for treating me for my birthday. I've had an absolutely epic day. Learned a lot as well, and it's been brilliant and wouldn't hesitate in recommending it. Pop a link in the description down below for more information if you fancy doing similar. Like normal, I've included some of it, but left a whole host out just so it doesn't spoil it. If you happen to join one of the tours as well. After coming over Kirkstone Pass, then headed back to Ambleside where I got dropped off, and then I got the bus back to Keswick. When I got back to Keswick, I met up with Rachel and we had a wander around and then grabbed something for an evening meal. Well, it's raining this morning. Calm sits not expected in the late district though now, can you? Popped out for a little bit of breakfast. It's the death of my birthday, it's raining, so popped into the weather spoons. Save a few quid, £8.50 for a coffee and a breakfast. Well, the rain's stopped now, which is brilliant. You can see the hills again. You know what that means, if you can see the hills, it's going to rain. <laughs> when you can't see the hills, it's already raining. I think Rachel must have left the tap running while I've been out. Look at that. Bit of a flooded pitch there. It has been very wet though. Still no flood alerts. Bike. It's a good idea. Ducks. More home service point, the town and the chemical disposal point, the shop and information. Some geese come in there. You can see the depth marker there for when it floods. Gives you an idea of the water level. That's why all of the electrical points are raised up to make sure they don't get submerged when the site does flood. Absolutely cracking view down the lake there. Absolutely cracking view down the lake there. So along here we've got the super service pitches with the best views of the lake. These are the views from those pitches. Pheasants here. There's also a river that runs along the site. It's coming up to that one now. All is there. And we've got the river that just runs alongside it. Just there behind the hedge. Danger. Deep water. Another uh, service point there. Waste water and water. Quick tour of uh, Keswick Camping and Caravanning Club site in the uh, Lake District absolutely stunning views here and you can't knock the location whatsoever it's perfect because you can just park up and get on with your uh, get on with your holiday and not worry about moving around uh, there's bus services from Keswick to 
all the major areas of the Lake District and onward connections from there. Here we go, back to the van now, and then puddles, and in we go, and that's Keswick. So Rachel, firstly, massive thank you for the birthday. Um, had an absolutely cracking time. We're, we've had a lovely time away and it's been fantastic to come away in the van as well, which has been brilliant. And you know what? I know it's raining now, but we are at Keswick in the Lake District, which is very close to one of the wettest places in England. And so, you did jinx it. You did say we were mm, here and it wasn't raining. So yeah. It was bound to. Yeah, but we've done really well, actually. It's only this morning and we're heading off today. So not too bad. So we were at last at this site many years ago. It's got to be over a, a, probably 10, 15 years ago when we were last here. And we're on the uh, Keswick site by the lake, the Camping and Caravanning Club one. So what have you thought, Rachel, coming back here after all this time? It is a beautiful site. I mean, you couldn't get any lake close to the lake if you tried. Um, really, really nice. I'd say the facilities are a little bit dated um but the convenience of being a couple of minutes trotting to keswick which there's so many things to see and do so many places to eat and drink fantastic i really do recommend it it's lovely what have you thought yeah really enjoyed it, it uh, as i say it's a location thing i always think and apologies if anyone takes offense to this but the um camping and caravanning clubs like your travel lodge your caravan and motorhome clubs more like your premier inn and the as rachel said the facilities were clean and tidy um but if you compare it to troutbeck head where we were previously it's just in a different league absolutely cracking location you can't knock it and it was fantastic to get on here there was a two night minimum booking which personally i'm not impressed with um it was three nights in november first week in november come on camping and caravanning club what you're playing at you should have one way you can just book in and out um so that's my only leisure bitch as you might call it <laughs> there has been a change as well since we were last here so before if you wanted one of the uh, pitches really close to the lake it was just a hard standing now they're classed as super pitches so if you want one of those pitches you'll need to book a super pitch and if you get a super pitch you get a tap yeah. out about that <laughs> we'll leave it there thanks very much again rachel for a cracking birthday and another year older thank you for watching hope you've enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one bye, bye.